Franchising is the most misunderstood and most overlooked form of entrepreneurship. We're here to educate you and help you find the entrepreneur within. Franchising is not all about the French fries. We find that individuals who are exploring business ownership tend to have a lot of misperceptions and misunderstandings about the franchise industry. So what we want to do is help prospective business owners make confident and educated decisions before moving forward or not moving forward with the business. Welcome to Unpredicted Entrepreneur. Hello and welcome to episode 64 of Unpredicted Entrepreneur. My name is Sarah Wasco and I'm joined by my colleague Roxanne Rapsky. And we created this podcast to bring information about franchising and business ownership. And so today we are thrilled to have a guest with us who is the founder and CEO of Max Strength Fitness. His name is Jeff Tomaszewski. So Jeff, welcome to Unpredicted entrepreneur and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Look forward to it. Well, let's just dive right in. Whenever we have founders, we always want to hear the backstory. Like how on earth did you get started in a business called Max Strength Fitness? When we learned your story, we were super impressed. And so we wanted to invite you on our podcast here to share that story with our listeners. So just tell us a little bit about your background and kind of how things began with Max Strength Fitness. Sure. This journey of strength and finding strength for me started at a very young age. I was five years old, just about to turn six, and my mother had battled ovarian cancer for 18 months. I saw the strength that she had to have to fight that battle. I I saw the strength that my dad had to have, having three children at that time, young boys. Um, Unfortunately, my mother passed away, and I didn't know it at the time, but a seed was planted in me to help people become the strongest versions of themselves. And so... Fast forward, I got into high school. I was very good in sports and I going into college, I was very enamored with athletic training and sports medicine. And I thought that my path was going to become a physical therapist. So upon graduation from college, I worked in a physical therapy clinic as an athletic trainer. And the problem with the industry, as I found over the next couple of years was patients, as soon as they're starting to get better, they only have so many visits allowed by the insurance company. Maybe it's five, maybe it's 10. But as soon as that's over, then they're left to give a home program and do things on their own. And most people, let's be honest, are non-compliant. So I said, there's got to be a better way. So when I was in physical therapy working in that clinic, I had a colleague of mine who stumbled upon a strength training methodology that was efficient, effective, and extremely safe that we started implementing with our patients. So I left the practice. I went back to Case Western Reserve University where I'd gone to undergraduate. I became the athletic trainer there. I was the strength coach there. I was getting my master's through the medical school. I was a professor. So I was doing all of these things. And then I took this protocol and started implementing not only with myself, my wife and family and friends and anybody I could get my hands on. (laughs) And so then fast forward another couple of years after that, I started Max Strength Fitness and I've been doing this ever since 2004. So I just knew that there had to be a better way to help people become strong on their own terms. And that's kind of what led me to today. That, that's amazing. That's a lot. Um, thank you. It's, you know, and it's interesting because I've heard your story and I got to tell you, every time I hear your story about, you know, at five years old, I still get goosebumps. So mm-hmm. it's interesting how profound things can be in our lives at, at such a young age. So I'm, yeah. and I'm so happy that you've turned that into something so positive to help other people. And I think you have um, this type of training. Is it mainly geared towards a demographic who's your like who's your ideal person that uses this type of exercise yeah so so the exercise protocol actually can be done with anybody i actually proved it out when i was getting my master's thesis i actually implemented this protocol with youth they were 10 to 16 year old inner city kids they were doing a summer camp and so i was able to use it as my master's thesis so the protocol itself can be done at any age But from a business perspective, Max Strength Fitness, we target a very, what I believe, underserved population, and that's typically 50 and above. We go after people who have built their wealth, but kind of let their health suffer, um, and that's where we come in. So executive level, CEOs, male, female, take super moms and super dads, people that don't have time to exercise, and they don't like a traditional gym setting, and that's where we come in. So we're kind of the anti-gym, if you will, 
I mean, I wear a shirt and tie to work. This is actually my uniform for work. I dressed up for you too, but this is what we wear every day. So we act professionally, dress professionally. So we go after that very underserved market because our protocol is therapeutic in nature, because we lift the weights in about 10 seconds and we'll lower them at that speed. So we want tension on the muscle the entire time. It robs the body momentum and it takes all the stress off the joints. So most of our clients being 50 and above have some type of chronic issue that we need to address. And our therapeutic model allows for that, where most trainers would either avoid those or make them worse. We like to fix people rather than break them, if you will. So the protocol works for everybody, but we target a very specific market within our business. Got it. Yeah, I think that's so smart because that demographic, as you said, is not comfortable in a gym. Um, They run the risk of injury. I certainly am in that demographic and and don't feel comfortable going in and trying to figure it out for myself. And so need somebody to guide me through that exercise. And obviously, as we get older, um, things start to kind of, I don't know, I hate to use the word disintegrate, but... (laughs) That's shrink, expand, whatever, <laughs> whatever the bone or muscle might be. So anyway, that's awesome. Well, that, that, that's absolutely true because after the age of 30, we all suffer from a condition called sarcopenia. And that's the wasting away of muscle tissue and mass. And then when you lose muscle mass, you lose strength. We lose muscle mass at about a rate of three to 8% every decade after 30. And after 60, it about doubles. So like wow. you said, if you don't use it, you lose it. And yeah. as you lose muscle mass, we also tend to lose bone density as well. Yes. So we can get a profound effect at increasing bone density, increasing strength, stability, mobility, and flexibility around the joints and just help people become the strongest versions of themselves in only 20 minutes twice a week without breaking a sweat because we keep our temperatures controlled in our studio to keep the body as efficient as possible. But the bonus, the client can literally come in, train, most of them wear their street clothes or business clothes, go right back to their busy day, don't have to worry about showering or grooming. So it's very efficient from that perspective. Wow. That's a, that's a game changer. Cause you know, yeah. with, with your, especially females, I mean, I'll speak for myself, I guess. Cause you know, my, my morning routine is long. We'll just say that. So if I had to start over again at noon or in the middle of the day, it's, it's not going to happen. Yeah, so it takes too much time. Yeah. So yeah, that's a, that's a big game changer right there. So in 2004, which was 20 years ago, amazingly, was, was that max strength fitness that you started then, or was it a different business that evolved into max strength? Yeah, it was a different business at the time. I had a business partner. It was called overload fitness. Him and I started, we opened up a brick and mortar business in Beachwood, Ohio. Uh, We were business partners for a good 10 years. And then we just decided to go separate ways. And then in 2013, I rebranded as max strength fitness, but still same protocol, same philosophy. I had another studio in Westlake, Ohio that I started in 2007. Um, And then I opened up my second corporate studio under Max Strength Fitness in 2017. And then just last year uh, in 2023, in October 1st, we opened up our third corporate studio uh, in Strongsville, Ohio. So I had three corporate studios now under Max Strength Fitness. Three corporate. And then obviously now you're franchising. And so you actually are at one of your franchisees locations in Florida now, um, getting them open, getting them started. So tell us a little bit about your participation in their last steps to get to get their business open. Yeah, we awarded our first franchisee in Niceville, Florida in May of 2023. So it takes us about um, eight to 10 months to once we sign a franchise agreement to when we open. And so we're right on the cusp of opening it now. We installed the equipment just about a week ago. So I'm down here just doing some fine tuning with the team, getting them acclimated. We do a lot of pre-marketing. So we'll do digital marketing, but we don't rely only on digital marketing where a lot of fitness businesses do. With our demographic being 15 above, they still love to read. So we do a lot of print. We'll do everyday direct door mail, post, oversized postcards. We'll do direct mail. We'll do letters. We'll do a specific, pick a specific targeted um, list and and market to them from that perspective. We'll also look at different like local news magazines and newspapers um, that are tailored to our affluent clientele that are very specific. And then we'll tell a, what I like to say, an advertorial. So we don't run an ad, if you will, where it's just benefits and features. We're always going to feature one of our clients as a spotlight because we're just the guide along the way to help them to get to the transformation that they desire. So we're always going to feature that client in our marketing. And so that we, we have a lot of pulls in the water, if you will, from a marketing perspective. So we have a lot of different ways to attract clients. And then we'll form strategic alliances with physical therapists, chiropractors, massage therapists, high-end restaurants, wine stores, you know, wherever our demographic is shopping and retailing, we're going to go and create strategic alliances with them 
Um, so we can help one refer to them and they can refer to us. So it's a cross promotion. That's wonderful. So is that something that the owner does to go out in their community and introduce themselves and build those strategic relationships? Yeah, because the owner has, you know, we'll drive from corporate, we'll drive a lot of the marketing assets. We have, you know, all you done for your marketing that they need to implement. And we have a strategic uh, plan, if you will, for them to go out into the community, whether it's in their chamber of commerce or rotary clubs or just strategic alliances, like I just mentioned. So we have it all templated out. It's all a system that they just need to go and implement. But yeah, they do need to put in a little bit of work. And, you know, that's the beauty of franchising is I don't have a sphere of influence in that area, but the owner typically should and and does. And so they have a sphere of influence that they can automatically tap into to bring clients into the door or have people refer people into the door. So we can open up the doors pretty quick with a pretty profitable model after a couple months. Well, and I think this particular franchisee has a physical therapy background, right? So she's got that network yeah. of... Cause like you said, you know, you, however many visits insurance pays for, and then you're on your own. So she's yeah. got some of those built-in referral sources, right? Yeah, she does. She is a physical therapist and she actually teaches physical therapy at one of the universities. Nice. And then she does physical therapy PR on the side. And that was a very good synergy between us uh, as a, a, a core philosophy of what we do from a training perspective. Cause we kind of have the same experience in the physical therapy practices um, where I got out of it a lot earlier Um, now she can continue to take any of those patients or the physical therapist in her network and help. We're a great avenue for post therapy. We don't accept insurance. It's all self-pay. Um, this, you know, unfortunately in the United States, everything is reactive from a healthcare perspective and not proactive. Um, so, you know, we go and target those people, but we have those strategic alliances. So when they're discharged, you know, from their physical therapy, we're the next great step. And I just want to make a, a note here that you're not required to have that kind of a background. This is anybody oh. really with a corporate background is who you're looking for that would be ideal in in, in running a business, right? Yeah, our you know we we got lucky with Cassia being our first one having that physical therapy background that will just help her tremendously. But what we're looking for from an ideal business perspective or a prospect for a franchisee is somebody who has business acumen. Yeah. They don't have to have any personal training background. It's probably better that they don't because what we do is very different. We can train their team, their GM on how to do max strength fitness. We have a whole max strength fitness Academy online. That's got video modules, quizzes, tests, text, you know, lots of things. We zoom back and forth. We'll role play. We do on-site training when they're um, getting onboarded, they'll come to Cleveland where we're at corporately spending three to four days with us. Once their equipment's installed, we'll go down and spend three, four days with them, get them up to speed. But I want a business owner who's passionate, somebody who wants to make an impact in the community because that's what we do all day, every day at Max Strength Fitness. I don't know of any other business that you can profoundly improve the quality of somebody's life without surgical or medical interventions like we can at Max Strength. Well, that is very profound. It is. So and thank well you. Said. And very well said. <laughs> and thank you for sharing that. And Roxanne and I have a lot of the same thought process that we would prefer to stay healthy and take care of ourselves than deal with the after effect of injuries or whatever it might be. So um, just sure. like you were talking about bone density. Mine um, was starting to diminish and I did not choose to take um, medication and started strength training and it turned around. And so I know that's good for me, um, obviously with the bone density, but in a lot of other ways as well. So I'm a firm believer. Yeah, yeah we, get a pro- we get a profound effect when it comes to bone density because muscle attaches to bone. Bone is a living and breathing organism. It's always remodeling. So it's either getting better or worse. Um, We see clients either slow the trend of osteoporosis, stop it or reverse it or get off of their medication, which is profound. Now, it takes time for change. That's why typically they'll recommend a a DEXA scan, which measures your bone density usually every two years, Mm -hmm. but we can get changes within six to eight months. So it's not only can you increase your bone density, but you can increase your overall strength, which increases your overall functional ability, which means you can improve the ability to do daily tasks or recreational activities. We can help stabilize blood pressure, cholesterol, reverse type two diabetes by stabilizing blood sugar. We can increase your cognitive perspective. There's tons of research now supporting high intensity strength training have a beneficial effect on our mind. And from a cognitive perspective, we have a lot of clients that have Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or dementia. Um, This is part of their therapy um, from that perspective. So there's so many benefits of high intensity strength training. And finally, all the research is now starting to support what we've been doing for for over 20 years. It's amazing. The science behind it is very amazing. 
So yeah. you started independently and now you're franchise and you're just kind of getting started on that franchise path. Tell us some of the lessons that you've learned as you tra- transition from your three corporate stores to now being a franchisor. Yeah. You know, the biggest one currently right now we're dealing with it is construction. So, you know, they're going to give you time frames and give you deadlines, but I just did a corporate build out uh, in Q4 of last year. And now we're doing the nice bill build out. And both of those were delayed. And whether it's, you know, the spiral duct tubing is is delayed or the ceiling tile is delayed or lighting, something is always on a delay, right? And not not anybody's fault, but it just, it things happen. So the biggest lesson right now is to put buffer in place, put deadlines in place, put ramifications and penalties in place if the contractors aren't meeting their their due diligence and doing what they, they claim that they can do. That's one aspect of it. And then just really understanding what it takes to get our trainers that are not corporately in Cleveland, because we know how to train a trainer when they're in site, you know, when they come on board with us on our corporate team, but now taking somebody that's, you know, across the country and bringing them up, training them online and then training them in studio and then having them go back and implement some things. So that's been an eye opener for us. I knew it would be a challenge. Um, it'll always be our biggest challenge because we really need to make sure the quality of the training is up to standard. So we'll do site checks periodically. We'll do role playing back and forth. That's the beauty of having Zoom and FaceTime and technology. Um, so we're really passionate about making sure that the service is the max strength standard um, moving forward. So we're going to put a ton of effort into that. So when you talk about construction, where um, do you normally locate? Are you in retail spaces, office spaces? How many square feet? Tell us more about that. Yeah, great question. And um, the answer to that is the square footage, we're looking minimally 1,600 up to about 2,500 square feet. So you've got a nice little range there. Um, As far as the location goes, two of my three corporate studios are in corporate parks and they'd be considered like class B, whereas my third uh, space is a retail space. It's the first one. We're on a very busy street, very busy intersection. We have a max strength fitness logo on the front of the building, all up in lights, which is amazing. Um, But our other ones, you would never even know we're there because we're kind of tucked away and there's no external signage on the street or on the building because it's not available. So we are more of a destination place because we build our business based on getting tremendous results. Clients rave about us, tell their family and friends. And so they tell everybody and then it refers. And then the marketing attracts them to that ideal space. So you could go class A, class B, anywhere between 1,600 to 2,500 square foot, depending on where you're at. We have technology that we uh, utilize to find the ideal, um, not only the ideal population and target where your demographic should be and where they live, but then also we work with a real estate company that really targets in the demographic and says, this is an ideal spot rather than you guessing and thinking it might be. So we use a lot of partners and technology to take all the guesswork out of it. Great. So what I'm hearing you saying is that retail is not required. It's an option if it, if it works out, but that's not a requirement, yeah. right? Correct. Correct. You're going to pay more for retail, so you don't have to. Like yeah. I said, my my two corporate stu- my first two corporate studios, they're not, and they see over you know 360 sessions per week. Okay. So you don't need to be in those fancy places. I wanted to do a third corporate studio for retail just because as I was getting into franchising, <clears throat> I wanted to prove out that model and actually see the difference in cost and what that model looked like. So I have those two models. So if franchisees want to look at that, they have that opportunity. I think that's great that you have that model to look at and you can right. speak to it. So tell us a little bit about differentiators. Cause a lot of times when I bring up fitness, um, the first reaction I get, even if it's somebody that likes fitness is, Oh, that's saturated. That's oversaturated. And then we talk a little bit about boutique fitness. And so anyway, tell us what your def- differentiators are. How do you stand out in the market? Yeah, I think the first thing is we already mentioned is the demographic that we serve. Yeah. You know, there's there are fitness businesses that serve 15 and above, but I think we do it in a very different, unique way. We are a higher end. We don't compete on price. So we're going after a higher end affluent clientele. Our average client is going to pay us about $480 per month. So a little over 5000 per year. That gives us good margins in the business. It gives you a good business to be able to run. We have a career path with our trainers as well. So there's a lot of turnover in the fitness industry. So we can show a trainer coming on board. Once they get um, into, into the system and get a good book of business, they can grow. So we pay our trainers per the session. So as the business grows, their, their income grows as well. So we're all on the same page. 
Whereas a lot of times the personal trainer may be paid for the session, but they're required to bring in their own book of business. So they're like basically like a subcontractor. We don't do that. We actually give them a bonus if they bring in a referral and they and we convert them into a client. So we've got the career path from the trainer. The methodology and the training protocol, I think, is extremely different as well because it's efficient, effective, and safe. It's 20 minutes twice a week without breaking a sweat and get a profound result in a fraction of the time you'd normally spend in the gym. Like I said, we're the anti-gym. You walk in, we're wearing shirt and tie, blouses and slacks for females. It's distraction-free, no mirrors, no music, allows for extreme focus. We take our clinical background and make sure we can have the client's attention the entire time. So there's no rah-rah cheerlead. It's not boot camp or people screaming and yelling at you. It's a professional instructing you every step of the way so to make sure that one, you do it correctly, two, we get the most out of you and you get the profound result that you're looking for and you can get right back to your busy day and enjoy doing what you you love to do. So it's always one-on-one. If I come in, oh. I'm going to have a trainer and that trainer is going to be with me the whole time. Yeah, it's always one-on-one. You know, there's there's no such thing as multitasking. So if you're doing one-on-two or one-on-four, which is a very popular model because they want to make more money per hour of slot, I, we always give you our undivided attention the entire time and we'll never change that protocol. So it's very personalized, yeah. which is yeah. really key. And each individual is just working against themselves, right? Just in terms of how they performed last time and they're challenging against themselves, Correct. Correct. Yeah. So it's, it's always that competition with yourself. You know, can we, how can we get better today than we did last session? And it's not about lifting more weights or getting more reps. It's about increasing the quality of the exercise so we can get a bigger result from it. So we get to know our clients extremely well because most of our clients are going to buy a 12 month package. So that's the other thing with our membership. We have a six, 12 and 18 month package. 80% of our clients will buy a 12-month package. So that gives us a long time to build that results, but also build the rapport. And our retention is through the roof because they get great results in 20 minutes, twice a week. You know, people come to Max Strength Fitness when we survey them. Number one reason is because it's 20 minutes, twice a week. They stay with Max Strength Fitness for years because it's 20 minutes, twice a week, but they get amazing results. And they love the trainers and they love the rapport that they build with the team. So our retention is extremely high from that perspective. Does anyone ever ask for more? Like, can I come three times a week? Does that ever happen? Yeah, I do I do have a handful of clients that want to come three times a week or if they have a very therapeutic need and will create a very specialized routine from a therapeutic perspective, like maybe a post rehab. I do have that clientele. Um, it's, it's few and far between because okay. less is not more. But if they want to come, you know, I have clients sometimes, I have one client, he's like, I I, I got to come. It's just for a mental release. He loves it. He gets great results out of it. And so we just modify the routine based on that so we don't overtrain them. Gotcha. All right. Very cool. And then on the personalization side um, and the time they're spending with those trainers, they build a relationship with them. You shared some feedback uh, when we chatted before, just a little bit about an anniversary and a gift or tell us a little bit about that. Just because I feel like that's just, you obviously reference under promise and over deliver. So tell us just kind of, I guess that reflect is reflective of the culture that you want to create. So I thought that was important. Yeah. So one of our core values at Max Strength Fitness is to over deliver, give more value to a client than they give us in payment. And like I said, they pay us a high dollar. So we're always looking and listening for what we determine secret service things. So for example, if I'm training Mrs. Jones and it's a Friday afternoon and I say, Mrs. Jones, what are you doing this weekend? She's like, oh, it's our 25th wedding anniversary. I said, oh, what are you doing? We're going out to Red Steakhouse. Great. We'll call ahead to Red, send a bottle of wine or flowers or something. We always like to surprise and delight our clients without them ever knowing it. You know, birthday gifts, anniversary gifts, free sessions, cards. Unfortunately, you know, losses in the family will send send flowers and things of that nature. So it's always trying to find the little things. And I task my team with trying to get information on the client that we can surprise and delight them along the way, like buying a specific T-shirt that might have a phrase that means something to that client, but will mean nothing to anybody else. It's five, seven bucks, but you know, it, it makes a profound difference. So mm-hmm. we're always trying to over deliver. That is a core value of Max Strength Fitness. And that's another differentiator, I believe. I would definitely say so. Yeah. So you um, are obviously growing and you've learned a lot uh, moving into a franchisor role from independent business owner. If somebody is listening to this podcast today and is thinking that they might want to own a business, 
What piece of advice could you give them as they're evaluating if this is a path that they want to take or not? From a franchisee perspective or a franchisor? I would say from just a prospective business owner. So a prospective franchisee perspective. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the first advice I can give is read The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. It's the first business book I ever read. And that set me on the path for franchising because that whole book is all about setting systems and processes in place and having operational things behind the scenes so that it runs smoothly like a franchise. So it's thinking of the end in mind as if you're going to franchise your business, even if you never do. Because what that does then is that allows you to truly own a business rather than own a job. Mm -hmm. Because let's face it, when we start a business, typically the business owner is a technician by trade, meaning that they're really good at the craft. Like I was really good at personal training. So I did it on my own. I was like, there's got to be a better way. But I didn't know the bookkeeping. I didn't know the marketing. I didn't know the advertising. I didn't know the call, how to build a culture, how to hire a team, how to train a team, how to lead a team. And all of those things you need to learn. But that's where putting systems and processes in place help you to really, truly have a business that is successful and scalable at the end of the day. And it saves you from a ton of headaches. So I consider my businesses a self-managing company where I put key people in place that do the day-to-day -day business, run the operations, implement the systems that I give them. And then I just inspect what I expect from a performance standpoint. And I've been running that executive model for the last seven years. When I opened up my second corporate studio, I got 100% out of training and that's where it's attractive to our franchisees coming on board. Like I said earlier, they don't have to be an owner operator. They can be if they want, but they don't necessarily have to be. I want people with the business acumen that we can uh, teach their GM and their trainers how to do what we do. Very well said. Excellent articulation in making your point. So thanks for sharing that with us. That's an excellent book. We've both read it. Mm -hmm. So Jeff, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, how would they do that? Yeah. MaxStrengthFitness.com is our website. There's a franchise tab on there too. If they're interested, they can fill out a quick form. We'll go through the discovery process. It's a lengthy process, but quick. You know, It's a seven-step process, but we do our due diligence, talk about the financials, talk about the core fit, make sure it's a good fit for them, make sure it's a good fit for us. And all of our methodologies on that page, that's our client-facing page as well. So they can see the methodology, the testimonials, and just kind of how the business runs. Great. Thank you. And thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule today because I know you're on site helping, helping an opening. So we appreciate you for doing that. For those of you listening, thank you so much for joining us today. Please find Sarah and I on friendnet.com or on LinkedIn. We're very active there. Sarah with no H, Wasco, W-A-S-K-O-W. I'm Roxanne Rapsky, R-A-P-S-K-E. Or you can um, find our podcast, Unpredicted Entrepreneur, on any of the podcasting platforms. And we have a YouTube channel, FranNet of Dallas, Fort Worth, and Oklahoma. Thank you. 